Hello everyone, my name is Thomas Trautner and together with my supervisor from the University of Bergen in Norway, Stefan Bruckner, we developed Lineweaver, an importance-driven order-enhanced rendering of dense line charts. And to begin with, let me start by telling you why we consider this surprisingly little explored topic of utilizing blending order and its impact on line charts to be particularly interesting. Line charts are an effective and widely used technique for visualizing series of ordered two-dimensional data points. The relationship between consecutive points is indicated by connecting line segments, revealing potential trends or clusters in the underlying data. Unfortunately, individual lines become harder to distinguish and interpret with an increasing number of lines. A popular remedy to distinguish individual lines is the use of color and standard alpha blending. Unfortunately, the blending order is currently either ignored or naively used, for example, assuming it is implicitly given by the order in which the data was saved in a file. This is common practice with standard visualization tools, such as Tableau, and as you can see here, even in PowerPoint. Due to the non-commutativity of classic alpha blending, this results in misleading and possibly even contradicting visualizations of the same underlying dataset. The terminology of the algebraic model for visualization design proposed by Kindleman and Scheidecker explicitly refers to this as so-called hallucinators. We therefore present Lineweaver, a novel visualization technique for dense line charts. Using an importance function, we developed an approach that correctly considers the blending order independently of the render order and without any prior sorting of the data. Well, you may ask, is order really that important? As indicated by the Gestalt principles, rendering order and the resulting occlusion relationship among graphical elements can have a significant impact on their perception. For example, when looking at the wireframe representation of a cube, where only the edges connecting the corner points are visible, our brain will not emphasize the individual primitives, such as triangles, rectangles, or trapezoids that arise from intersections, but instead it will tend to recognize the three-dimensional cube due to the implicitly derived order of the lines instead. Knowing that, how can we now apply these insights to line charts? I have to say, researching while wearing a warm, cozy, and if you ask me even cool-looking Scandinavian-style sweater, a so-called Mario was actually quite inspiring. As shown here, we can easily draw an analogy to the textile industry, for example, when comparing weaving or knitting techniques. Each juxtaposition shows a classic illustration on the left in comparison to a visualization of digitally woven or knitted lines on the right. Instead of a global ordering of individual threads, they are locally interwoven, forming a visible pattern to the human observer. In the same way, our aim is to thread lines in a meaningful pattern, instead of simply pasting them on top of each other. We therefore started our research by exploring related and inspiring work that is already out there. First, I therefore want to start with visualizations of features derived from line data and how they can be visually encoded. One possibility to reduce clutter is to visualize a density estimation instead of individual lines or curves. Unfortunately, density representations in general are not well suited when analyzing individual lines, especially in sparse regions. Other work includes hierarchical cluster enhancement for parallel coordinate plots visualizing clusters as opacity bands. But unfortunately, the use blending operator or blending order is not further specified. Assuming that multidimensional data originates from a continuous domain, continuous parallel coordinate plots represent a related approach to kernel density estimations, and therefore benefit from the same advantages while suffering from the same disadvantages. Assuming that lines or curves can also be used to view three-dimensional trajectories or networks, edge bundling can help to improve the readability of graph visualizations. And here I want to point out that we do not consider edge bundling as a competing approach, but as a possible preprocessing step. The resulting line bundles could, for example, subsequently be interwoven using Lineweaver. Resulting line bundles can furthermore be emphasized by global illumination and real-time ambient occlusion approaches, which we consider as very effective. Additional inspiration comes from combining space-time cubes with kernel density estimations, interpreting line sets as volumes. A volumetric representation allows for the use of transfer functions, which inspired us to use importance functions. 
Of course, there's also research related to advanced and optimized rendering techniques for dense line and curve datasets. One possibility to reduce clutter is to visualize a smooth version of the input data without high frequencies or noise, which we consider as an optional pre-processing step, being again potential input for line weaver. Polar stroking, for example, represents current state of the art in line rendering, where the arc length can be used for texturing or dashing. We as well create a polygonal scaffolding for each polyline by extruding it on the fly into a triangle strip. Other related strategies consider the rendering of lines as a global optimization problem. Unfortunately, in contrast to three-dimensional datasets, line charts do not have such an implicit given depth order. Furthermore, I want to point out that weaving as a technique usually refers to the selection of one colored item, such as a part of a polygon or line, which is then exclusively rendered on top at a given location. Blending, on the other hand, refers to the mixing of multiple colors, for example, assigned to multiple lines, which all overlap. Our approach can be seen as hybrid between both, as we use blending to combine contributions of lines with similar importances. But since importances may vary along the lines, their overall appearance may be reminiscent of a weaving pattern. Finally, I want to highlight depth-dependent halos, which inspired us as well to visually emphasize resulting weaving patterns. In summary, this and many other related papers have inspired us, and next I want to introduce you to the basic requirements of our algorithm. Our approach is based on the following three requirements. First, the contributions of individual lines should be independent of their order in the dataset or the order in which they are rendered. This way, we avoid render or blending order dependent and therefore possibly misleading visualizations, so-called hallucinators. We therefore regard a line set D of n polylines with its members L1, L2 until Ln represented as tuples of m ordered two-dimensional points p1, p2 until pm. The resulting parametric curve of each member is normally a polyline generated by linear interpolation between associated points. But of course other interpolation functions are equally possible. We chose this formulation since it is general enough to represent common visualizations such as time series charts or parallel coordinate plots, which simply constitute different mappings between the underlying dataset and the x and y coordinates of the individual points. Second, line segments with similar importance contributions should also contribute similarly to the pixels they cover in the final image. This means that the contribution of line segments to a pixel that they both share are averaged, and hence the order is irrelevant. Third, when the importance of line segments differs significantly, the line segment with the high importance should occlude the line segment with the low importance. In our approach, we therefore propose to preserve occlusions and depth cues by using a blending operator that still exhibits occlusions while providing explicit control over occlusion relationships by introducing an importance function. While this may at first glance look like a minor semantic distinction, replacing the term order by the term importance, it opens up several interesting advantages. Our importance function now associates a scalar importance value with every position along each line or curve and has two major properties that distinguish it from order. An importance function is quantitative in nature and not just ordinal, and it doesn't need to be constant along a line, but it may vary. To achieve this, we need an adequate planning operator, performing on a per pixel resolution, which allows us to freely vary the importance function across the primitive. The decision of whether one element is in front of another in the classic overoperator is inherently binary and therefore prone to artifacts. A good illustration for this is set fighting. We therefore rely on a planning operator where the color contribution of one element influences the contributions of the other elements whenever they are within a certain importance range. We do this by using a continuous follow function. The individual contributions are then blended in sequence of their importance instead of their render order using a conventional overoperator. These properties can be seen in a pairwise comparison of two lines, each with varying importance. A red line with a step function as importance function, a turquoise line with a sign function as importance function, and a brown line with a tent function as importance function. 
Note the differences between smooth and abrupt changes in importance in A, how lines are averaged when their importance values are equal or close to equal in B, and that even highly fluctuating changes are not prone to errors in C. So far, I've already talked a lot about importance and how it can be used, so it is now finally time to define importance functions and where they may originate from. In principle, there are many different ways of how importance could be defined. First and most naturally, the importance value itself may be part of the underlying data, such as confidence or the result of a feature detection algorithm. In many cases, however, such domain-specific explicit importance measures may unfortunately not be available. In this case, we may instead want to use a more fundamental property of the lines themselves. Our goal is to minimize the amount of overdraw in a heuristic manner by assigning lower importance values to those lines that take up screen space. A simple way to achieve this is by specifying the importance based on the arc length of each line. And the impact of this simple yet powerful geometric property is shown here. How can this now be applied to light charts? Or what effect does it have on, for example, parallel coordinate plots? Basis for our exploration was the benchmark dataset of Blumenschein and others evaluating different axis reordering strategies in parallel coordinates. They found that intersections of line bundles can help identify clusters and cluttered datasets. It allows us to compare their suggestions to our insights. In other words, that the set ordering has a significant impact and that both orderings, axis and depth, are not independent. The authors conclude the dissimilarity-based axis arrangement, as shown here, tends to be less appropriate when identifying clusters. As illustrated from left to right, it is difficult to distinguish clusters when randomizing the order of lines, even when different colors are assigned to each cluster. This obviously does not change when lines are additionally highlighted with halos. Using a global importance, meaning an importance per polyline, the exact shape of the clusters becomes visible, even without colors. The importance of each line is determined by the cluster it belongs to. Apart from noise, the cluster with the most lines is considered as most important. Within each cluster, the importance of the line is then determined by its arc length, whereby the shortest line is rendered on top. Although the analysis of clusters using this similarity-based axis arrangement has so far been considered unsuitable, it is now done expressively using Lineweaver. Extending the idea of a global arc length dependent importance and exploiting the fact that importance values may vary locally, we propose an approach to generate importance values for common scenarios. In this case, each line has an associate group identifier, here highlighted in color, and our goal is to reduce the amount of overdraw by assigning importances based on an estimate of the amount of screen space taken up by this cluster. To derive a meaningful algorithm, let's look at a simplified toy example. The axis values of a particular group may vary locally for one dimension, but later on may fall in a much narrower range. Other groups may exhibit an inverse behavior. In such a case, the importance value for each group should correspond to the estimated amount of screen space such that the groups that take less space should receive higher importance values. We propose the following greedy weaving loom algorithm to compute the local importance values for such a weaving pattern. For each value along the independent axis of the graph, we first compute the minimum and the maximum value of each group. In other words, the interval on the dependent axis covered by lines belonging to this group. This allows us to determine the envelope of all lines associated with the group by connecting two subsequent intervals along the independent axis, forming a trapezoid. Next, we compute their areas. Let's narrow it down even further and take a closer look. Two scenarios may appear. First, there are no overlaps and therefore ordering them will not have an impact on the resulting visualization. And second, there are potential overlaps of the calculated cluster envelopes. In this case, we iterate over the calculated areas along the independent axis with the goal of establishing an ordering of all groups according to a cost function. Again, let's take a closer look by visualizing the math behind it. The cost value for a group corresponds to the sum of intersection areas with all other groups, multiplied by the area covered by the group itself. Initially, all groups are marked as active. Using the computed envelope areas, 
we next determine the area of intersection between all other active groups. Then we select a group with the lowest cost value among the active groups and mark it as inactive. We then repeat recomputing the cost value and select a group with the lowest cost until no active group remains. The importance values are then assigned based on this sequence of selection. In other words, the first selected group receives the highest importance, and so on. To demonstrate our technique for locally varying importance functions, we use a parallel coordinate plot from the UCI machine learning repository, containing properties of cars such as origin, number of cylinders, weight, horsepower, etc. from cars produced between 1970 and 1982. As shown here, when randomized, compact clusters like the red European cluster or even more the brown Japanese cluster bundle are difficult, if not impossible, to perceive and extract insights from. When using line viewer instead, it immediately becomes visible that Japanese and European car models have similar low displacement, horsepower and weight, and therefore also longer acceleration times, whereas American cars cover a much wider spectrum. In contrast to the rather compact and therefore strict ordering of displacement, horsepower, weight and acceleration, when looking at the model here for example, all three clusters are equally broad and therefore averaged instead of layered. Another well-established form of visualization are Andrews plots which are sometimes also referred to as smooth parallel coordinate plots. Each n-dimensional data point is defined as finite Fourier series, and here you can see the result of such a transformation. If the blending order is ignored or naively used, essential visual information is lost, even if outlines and halos are added, or clusters are colored. If, however, the ordering of clusters is optimized, both outlines and halos as well as colors can help perceiving clusters. Due to this optimization, the most compact beige cluster becomes visible. Notice how its color and opacity are averaged when it overlaps the turquoise cluster with almost identical width. A similar phenomenon can be seen with the dark blue and brown cluster. In contrast, the less compact red cluster is alternatively woven from front to back and vice versa. Each of these changes is smooth, which avoids hard cuts and discontinuities, enabling the viewer to better understand the entirety of the visualized dataset. Next, I want to present time series data derived from high-resolution satellite images, describing temporal changes of an area, considering in this example four classes. Soy red, grassland beige, poplar turquoise and minerals blue. Using the dataset order, classes have been saved one after the other and are therefore perceived as individual bundles. Unfortunately, the class that was rendered first will be the least visible, and the class that was rendered last will be the best visible. With random order, chance decides which outliers are preserved or which lines are rendered last and are therefore best visible. Line weave, on the contrary, works independently of the storage and rendering order, providing the same visual result even when these orderings are changed. Note that this time, the high smoothness of the blending guarantees that individual bundles are easy to identify, although they are mostly overlapping. Our approach also supports dynamically changing importance values, which enables various types of user interactions. To illustrate this, we implemented two well-established techniques, a magic lens that enables focus and context exploration and angular brushing. The lens positioned at the mouse cursor has local influence on the importance of all lines within and allows us to see lines that pass through a region even though they are covered by other lines. Similarly, angular brushing can help to locally pull a bundle of lines with a certain angle forward, like a rubber band metaphor. Our approach was implemented in C++ and OpenGL, and the complete source code is available at GitHub. It consists of two phases. During line rasterization, we upload the X and Y coordinate and the importance per tuple to the GPU. Based on the desired line thickness, we construct a triangle strip that allows us to interpret each line using a signed distance function. Together with the importance value, each contribution is then added to a per pixel linked list. During fragment blending, we sort the linked list based on an importance and then use the blending operator to determine the final pixel color. To evaluate our technique, we additionally conducted performance measurements. In total, we analyzed two artificially generated datasets and four real world datasets with different densities and varying numbers of lines. Furthermore, we used two representative screen resolutions and scaled each dataset so that its bounding box filled the viewport. 
In addition to the visual results and obvious visual differences, we furthermore attempted to numerically quantify the degree of overplotting, although there may be other measures that can access this in more detail, since our method is by no means tweaked to optimize this metric. As can be seen here, our method provides interactivity, and it is therefore easily possible to interact with it in runtime. The analysis furthermore showed that line weaver increases the information content by reducing clutter and overplotting, and therefore helps to display line data in a more expressive way. To conclude, I want to summarize our contribution. Line Weaver is a novel visualization technique for dense two-dimensional line data, allowing for an optimized blending independent of the rendering order and without costly initial sorting. The basis of Line Weaver is formed by a quantitative importance function, which either originates from external data or is derived from geometric properties of the lines, such as arc length, and additionally may vary locally. Furthermore, we presented Weaving Loom an algorithm which can be used to derive local importances. We have demonstrated that our approach can be implemented on modern GPU architectures to provide interactive and high-quality visualizations. And last but not least, I want to mention that this work was supported by the Metavis project funded by the Research Council of Norway. Thank you very much for your attention, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask now.